May 194 Ad, Cao Cao led his troops back to Yanzhou, immediately besieged Puyang, which Lu Bu occupied. Lu Bu held on to the city, but Cao Cao was helped by Pu Yang's big family of Tian, he let his army attack the east gate of Pu Yang, in order to motivate his soldiers to fight to the death. Cao Cao followed Han Xin's example to cut themselves off. After entering the city, they burned the east gate, but what Cao Cao didn't expect was, his Qing Zhou soldiers were crushed by Lu Bu's cavalry, when they just entered the city, in the street fighting, the superiority of cavalry is still enormous, the Cao army was in chaos, Cao Cao was also captured by Lu Bu's cavalry, fortunately, none of the people in this group had ever seen Cao Cao before. He lied that, the man riding the yellow horse no far away was Cao Cao. Everyone was overjoyed and chased together, Cao Cao took the opportunity to escape, he braved the fire and forced himself out of the east city gate, even his left hand was burned. Lost in the first battle Cao Cao was not discouraged, he boosted morale and gathered the remnants of his troops to continue attacking Pu Yang. Since then, the two sides had fought many times, each winning or losing. The two armies held each other for more than 100 days from May to August, at that time, Yan Zhou was in a severe drought and another severe locust plague broke out. There was simply no way to raise military rations, many soldiers fled due to hunger. Cao Cao had to return to Huanchang to rest, Lu Bu was also stationed to Shanyang, due to lack of food. In those war-torn years, food was the most important and scarce material, Zhang Xiao's uncle Zhang Ji died in a battle for grabbing grain, Yuan Shi's defeat was also related to the lack of food. Countless warlords, often not defeated by another more powerful armed forces, it's about self-defeat without a fight, dying due to lack of food. During the confrontation with Lu Bu, it was the most difficult period for Cao Cao. At that time, Cheng Yu was trying to help Cao Cao to get through the difficulties. Reluctantly he set his troops to gram food in Dong Er County. You must know that Cheng Yu was from Dong Er County, but the food what they robbed from their hometown, was only enough for Cao's army to support for three days, and it was even mixed with a lot of human flesh. Since then elections had affected Cheng Yu's reputation throughout his life. It was why Cheng Yu, who had not been named as one of the three counselors in his life, in this extremely difficult situation, Cao Cao led the soldiers through the harsh winter. In early 195 AD he overcame natural disasters, Rigriatin began to reclaim his lost ground. Cao Cao first marched into Dingtao, although the city defense was not conquered, but defeated Lu Bu's elite cavalry hardly. The Cao's army then marched all the way east to Zhu Ye, where Lu Bu's general Xu Weilan was stationed. After receiving the message, Lu Bu led the army to rescue, but he was defeated by Cao Cao again, Xu Lan was killed, Lu Bu retreated to Shanyang. At this time, the news came that Tao Qian, the governor of Xu Zhou, died of illness. Cao Cao's own opinion was to take the opportunity to attack Xu Zhou first, then go back and clean up Lu Bu. But Xun Yu clearly objected, after discussion Cao Cao accepted Xun Yu's advice, first to grab the wheat to solve the immediate problem of eating. Soon Lu Bu and Chen Gong led more than 10,000 men to attack, Cao Cao took the approach of showing weakness, half of the troops were hidden in advance, Lu Bu saw that Cao had few soldiers. Sure enough he rushed over without any scruples, waiting until the two armies fought together, Cao Cao saw the chance, ordered the ambushed soldiers to charge together, Lu Bu was defeated and fled to Ding Tao. Cao Cao then pursued and attacked Ding Tao, Lu Bu and Chen Gong led the remnants of the army to retreat to Xu Zhou to defected to Liu Bei. Zhang Miao fled to Xu Zhou too, he also sent his younger brother, Zhang Chao, to protect his family and flee to Yong Chiu. In August of the same year, Cao Cao surrounded Yong Chiu, after four months of fierce fighting, by December Yong Chiu was captured, Zhang Chao killed himself. Zhang Miao learned the news of Yong Chiu's 
siege, Ran to Yuan Shu asked for help, but he was killed by his subordinates before arriving Xiao Chun. At this point, Lu Bu's forces were all expelled, Yan Zhou also returned to Cao Cao again. One year later in August 196 A.D., Cao Cao recepted the Emperor Xi'an upon arrived to Xu Du, in order not to offend Yuan Shao, he ceded the title of the Grand General to Yuan Shao, and named himself as the Chancellor of Constructions. He took charge of the government of the Han Dynasty, soon the real power department in the Imperial Court, all of them were replaced by Cao Cao's henchmen. Xun Yu was named as Chief of Secretariat, responsible for the specific affairs of the country. Cheng Yu was given the title of the Governor of Ji Yin, taking charge of Yan Zhou. Man Chong was appointed as the Governor of Xu Du, taking control of the new capital, Dong Zhao controlled the old capital, Luoyang. Mao Jie was responsible for the election of officials. All the generals in the troops were Cao Cao's trusted men, such as Xia Ho Dun, Xia Ho Yuan, Cao Ren, Cao Hong, Yu Jin, Lu Chan, Li Dan, Yu Ai Jin, Xu Huang, Dan Wei and others. From 196 AD after Cao Cao took the emperor, the situation of China had also some changed, many petty warlords have been annihilated, for example, the eleven warlords of the alliance against Dong Zhuo, only the brothers Yuan Shao and Yuan Shu remained, it had only been six years. It can be seen how fast the big waves are rushing to the sand, the later waves like Liu Bei are still brewing, while most of the front waves were died on the beach. At this time Cao Cao was still surrounded by strong enemies, the north is the powerful Yuan Shao, the southeast is Yuan Shu, the east is Lu Bu of Xu Zhou, the south is Zhang Xiao in Wan Cheng, further south is Liu Biao in Jing Zhou, the northwest are Ma Tang and Han Sui. Facing with this situation, Cao Cao adopted the strategy of uniting the long distance but attacking the close one. In order to stabilize Ma Tang and Han Sui, Cao Cao sent Zhong Yao to Chang'ang, letting him command military of Guangzhou in the name of the emperor. After Zhong Yao arrived in Chang'ang, he wrote a letter to Ma Tang and Han Sui to clarify the relationship. Ma Tang, Han Sui, both obeyed, and each sent a son to the imperial court for rule. For Zhang Xiao, whose strength was weaker and close to him, Cao Cao was obviously not so polite. Spring 197 AD Cao Cao personally led his army on the road to conquer the Wancheng. During his military career, few places were quite like the Wancheng, filling him with extinction and bitter memories.